It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're continuing with the Baralti leg of the tournament, which, if you recall, began with Empire, Make History on Your Living Room Floor, and then continued with Shogun, and is now continuing today with the game that I've set up behind me, Andy and Abyss. Now, those of you who are following the tournament might notice that I've got a new used table behind me. It's very big, and I can I can play Andy in a bit lengthwise, which is the first time I've been able to do that solitaire. I've played the game several times solitaire, well, a few, uh, more with other people. Um, but I've always, in my old table, I always had to play it sideways, so I was looking at the map sideways. So now I have it straight on. I have, I'm have i just rangy, spread out, have all the cards set up superfluously, um, and all of our combatants. Now, uh, I'm making a little bit of a change to the Baralti leg of the tournament. I like to change things as, as changes occur. Um, rather than there being a straight elimination and then continuing with a three-player game, after this game, the players are going to be mercenaries. So I, I, what that means is they're going to be playing in other legs of the tournament to kind of fill out the roster. Um, so it's going to be a, a point system. I don't know, someone might be eliminated as a result of this game, or they could just get a lower score depending on uh, which games I finally decide to, to have and need mercenaries for. I haven't quite worked it out yet. Um, but just so you know, I'm going to be foregoing, I think, the three-player game of this leg, and then we'll end it off with the two-player game after the whole mercenary phase, which will continue after Andy and Abyss. Here we have the game all set up. The game takes place in Colombia uh, between uh, during the 1990s and the early 2000s. Um, here we see we have Betty Crocker as the government player. He was the Shogun. He's Shogun Betty Crocker. It's even written on his card, and so he gets to be the government. I think most in most games, if there's ever an, a doubt, everyone else I just went with their peace color, even though partially because I thought it made for some interesting roles. So here we have Junior. He's the Auk player. The Auk is sort of the right wing paramilitary that's funded by the landowners um, who have suffered from kidnappings and, and extortions and whatnot from the FARC player who is sort of the, the communist uh, uh, rebel uh, which is being played by Sonny who I believe is actually a member of the right wing in the United States of America so I, I like that kind of um, that I don't know that dissonance there um, and then finally we have Pinky who is the leader of the drug cartels and I went with the peace color from Shogun that they were that they were using uh, when possible except for the case of Betty Crocker so let's I'm not gonna go over exactly how to play the game but I want to give you some indicators so you can kind of judge how people are doing I think there are other videos put out on how to play the game and all of that and you probably can find the rules they're probably online um, so the government player they are trying to get past this point in terms of support. Now support are, are these markers here uh, multiplied by the population. So two times one, he gets two support for that. And you know, as the game starts out, you can see the marker here, total support is at 50, okay? His main opposition for that is the FARC player, who um, Sonny is going to be counting total opposition to the government, which is the red card markers here and that's that's total the same way plus the number of bases they have bases are these discs so right now he's getting six points for bases and then another uh, 14 for opposition they, they mainly are in the rural areas here um, you can score a lot more if you say you have Bogota if you have Bogota times two that's 16 uh, all right so and his other main opposition would be the Auk player here. And basically all the Auk needs, you're just watching here to see how Junior's doing. If he has more bases out on the map than Sonny does, okay, because when the bases come back, they cover up these numbers, um, then he wins. That's all he needs to do. Um, and then finally, so Sonny's kind of, his his goals are kind of directly um, against both, both uh, Betty Crocker and Junior's. And then... Um, and then uh, a pinky, she's kind of in her uh, doing her own thing. I mean, the others don't want her to win, but she's not directly oppositional to anyone necessarily, except that um, the government can score big money off of her, and other people can score money off of her. She's a she's kind of a cash cow. Um, but what you're going to be watching for her is both her number of bases. She has to have ten out. She starts with six on the map, and then. Um, 
her money. So these little cylinders here, that's their resources marked on the track if her money is above 41. Now, they they don't just need to meet their goal. They need to meet their goal at the right time. So the game's going to consist of turning over of cards, and you'll see that when a propaganda card comes up, if someone's uh, reached their goal at that point, the game's going to end, and then um, victory will be determined. Likely it'll be one person, but if it's multiple, there's some calculus that we'll have to, or not ca calculations we have to do. Um, other, other things of note on the map. These are gorillas, the cylinders. They can either be passive or active. Active, they're basically, they have less that they can do and they're more vulnerable um, to government attack. Uh, and these are holding boxes, so it doesn't really matter if they're face up or face down. You can see just at a, at a glance that the FARC has a lot more um, available gorillas than both the cartel, which has the fewest, and the AUK. Um, the cubes are the government units. They can either be troops, which is the dark blue, or police, are the, which are the light blue. The government needs to have both troops and police in order to improve their support in an area. Um, police are harder to get to certain places, but they are able to stay there between propaganda phases, whereas the troops have to go back. So that's kind of one advantage of the police. And then also, I think the police inhibit the cartels a bit more. If there's more cops around, the cartels are a bit more inhibited. Um, and again, these discs are bases. Um, spaces on the map, there's basically three types of spaces. There are cities, which are circles, and then there are departments, which are these kind of blotches, or their regions. And then there are um, lines of communication, which are basically these numbers and little circles. And those are important mainly for the government, um, and the FARC's going to be thinking a lot about that too. But the other the other players could as well. Uh, the government gets a lot of resources based on their lines of control uh, or communication, I think. Um, so at the propaganda phase, they're going to tally up those and get money on that. So you're going to see a struggle, likely, uh, over those because in order for the FARC to do anything, they really got to take out the government's resources. Otherwise, the government's just going to be hammering them. Uh, the government is by far the strongest player purely. Um, the cartel is probably the most flexible, uh, but they all have their own special things. Um, also, for the government to do certain movements, it has to go through... Um, lines of communication. So if there's a gorilla there, they have to stop. So that's a, that's another thing that that's important about those. Um, oh, I would, this is remains from the last game I was playing. All right, so uh, let's just get started and I'll kind of explain a little more as we go. Again, I'm not going to explain the whole game to you, um, but just enough so you can follow the action. We're going to start by turning over our first two cards. Now, this is different from other, other games that I've played. Um, basically, you're going to players are going to be able to see the. this is the operative card here and we're, we're reading it from left to right so the person furthest to the left has first priority in doing that and they have um, basically four choices that they can make if they're in this eligible box it's possible that they're ineligible and I'll get to that they can either pass which points they just get resources um, they can do use the card for operations which means they get to do they get that's uh, they get to do a lot of different things um, based on who they are. That that would be these things here, or they could do operations plus a special activity, which is better than this for them. But it gives the second the second person to act uh, more options. Or they can just do the event, which is the text on there. And most events have two choices, which are nice. Um, so then once they do that and they do all their stuff. Whoever's next on the card gets the same choice, except they have to choose from the second column. Once two different people have chosen to act on the card, then the rest are going to be passing automatically. Um, now the thing is, if you do something on a card, if you end up being in one of these two columns, on the next card you're going to be ineligible. So you want to be looking ahead. And actually I found you need to look ahead even beyond the second card, because if you are, say, inactive, during the second card, and the propaganda card comes up in the, as, the, as the third card, the people in the second card could pot potentially pass and get um, be able to be the first ones to to act before the propaganda phase. So that's how we're going to act. Uh, that's how it goes. So cartel player Pinky's going to go first, and I'll think about what she wants to do. Pinky starts the game out kind of low on money, so she actually went with the event on this one, which gives a a, a big boon to the second player because they can do a op plus special activity which is what Junior did. Um, but first Pinky 
she opened a Panama to the game. So people can put things there. She put two two bases down for free. That's one reason she did it. It was a good bargain. Um, Junior, he did a bunch of rallying. So he just poked guys up all over the place. Um, the reason why some of them are activated is he activated them in order to pay for their appearance uh, with the special activity extort. Just so you get the flow down, that's going to bring those two over here. Um, the government and the FARC are each going to get money. The government works on a different scale of money. They get three per turn uh, that they pass, whereas the FARC get one. The government's activities are also more expensive. One of the reasons why they even have that different scale is because players can trans transfer resources so um, to each other by as a part of the deal, part of deals and whatnot. So the government has more resources to work with in general. I've seen you know other players can end up with more than um, the others, and thus is able to uh, maybe if 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 they're a good negotiator, get some other people to do their dirty work. Final bit of process, I hope. So then what would happen is this card turns over, this one turns up, and then just the government and the FARC are going to be able to decide on the Betancourt card. And Sonny did a rather unSunny-like maneuver. Normally, Sonny, when he plays this game, likes to rally a lot. He likes to get his pieces on the board. But he's trying something different this time, perhaps because he has a little bit more experience. Um, I'm not sure that Sonny's won this game or not. Um, but instead, he marched, and he moved all his uh, a lot of pieces to a bunch of different LOCs. That left um, most of his bases unprotected, uh, which is a little fuzzy, but... You know, the, the, the bases are kind of hard to protect anyway. The Auk can just come in and assassinate them. Um, and it's it's kind of harder to, to, to do a straight attack. You know, you roll a number of, or you have to roll under the number of guys you have there. And if you don't have a lot of guys there, then. Um, so it would have taken a couple turns in order to beat back these guys. Um, and then... That left uh, Betty Crocker with, with the option of doing a limited operation or passing. He is definitely going to pass. And part of that is because there's a rather nice um, special government capability that he can get next turn if, if, he, if he so chooses. So this is going to leave Betty Crocker with a tough choice. So a lot of his LOCs are, have FARC uh, gorillas on them. Now he can, he can easily make it so that they can't sabotage the pipelines. But to do that, he is going to give up. He would have to give up this ability. This ability is particularly nice because normally you have to get police and troops to a department in order to change it towards support. Um, it's difficult to move police uh, to a department. It, it's very time consuming. And so it makes it a lot harder. If he can just move troops in and use it with this first division, um, that could be a huge boon for him, especially you know this early on in the game. Um, However, you know, he'd be giving up a lot of money, so because each of these sabotage one, three, five, seven, eight, eleven, fourteen, sixteen dollars. That's over half of his income, uh, his LOC income. That would be a problem. So he's going to try and have the best of both worlds. He's going to try and have his cake and eat it too. Um, he's in negotiations with Junior, who would be the next player to use um, his turn uh, to to do the event, so that he can use his turn, uh, so that Betty Crocker can use his turn to send the police over. They're going to have to think about that. And uh, Junior doesn't want to do it, although he is directly against the FARC um, in terms of bases. Uh, giving giving the government too much money and too much support is going to, to, to cause them to lose the game just as well as um, if anyone else did, even though they have some similar goals and or a common enemy, rather, in the FARC. So he's not going to do it. That makes Betty Crocker, gives Betty Crocker the, he has to choose. Um, the choice is made easier because Junior is next. The AUK isn't necessarily going to be working directly against the government most of the time, unless the government's about to win or something. So he is going to go with the event. Uh, Betty Crocker, as a game designer, also likes special powers. So that works for him. So he's going to have that special ability. And then Junior is definitely going to be taking the uh, uh, operations and special activity choice. Junior's now advancing hard on FARC territory. It's he, 
uh, you know, Sonny really left it open up for him. Fark have kind of two two main defenses against the Auk. One is their gorillas, uh, you know, just their their strength of presence, which can uh, defend against attack of their bases. But the the Auk also have the assassinate ability, which they can only do if they're they're doing terror, uh, which they have to be underground in order to do. Uh, Unfortunately for the Auk, if they move into a spot that's has any marker at all, opposition or support, and the number of counters moving plus the number of uh, enemy pieces that are there is equal, or is greater than three, then they all become active. So um, it's it's oftentimes different difficult to to bring in a undercover Auk agent into Fark territory, since Sunny you know spread himself really thin, which is very uncharacteristic of Sunny. Um, Junior was able to slip in, so he can he can do some some pretty big damage now. Uh, so now Sonny has a choice to make. It's Sonny's turn. He's definitely going to do the op plus special ability. The event isn't going to hurt him, um, and he's not worried about Pinky opening up Ecuador, which is you know, not really a problem. Um, but he can either carry out his plan of of taking out these these pipelines, which he, he has the opening to do, and also get quite a lot of money out of that, or he can move back and try to protect himself. Sonny went for the sabotage, which is interesting. Sonny um, and Junior both actually have these, these sort of like two kind of opposing forces that guide their behavior. So um, Junior he has a live and let live motto, so that's one reason he didn't really want to get involved in um, the struggle between Betty Crocker and Sonny so much. He wanted to focus on his own struggle with Sonny because that's part of the game. That's that's what he needs to do. That's what he has to do. Uh, but he also wants to be a fighter pilot. So, um, you know, he's he's setting up these bases and sending off foray, forays into uh, the FARC territory. That's kind of his strategy right now. Um, Sonny, on the other hand, he's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a police officer, so he's very uh, protective. He has a, he's a family man. He's very much about protecting his home and, um, you know, making smart, safe decisions. But at the same time, he, uh, you know, he fantasizes about parachute jumping, which is kind of oddly similar to being a fighter pilot in some respects. Um, uh, so he likes that, that little, he, he, he fantasizes about a bit of danger. Uh, he also liked to meet Napoleon, so I, I wish I knew more about Napoleon, Napoleon's uh, strategies. I do have War and Peace on my shelf, which eventually I want to play. I'm missing some components, though, so I might have to get another copy. Um, but you know, I, uh, the only thing I really remember about Napoleon is him marching into Russia. But apparently he was a good st strategist, so maybe Sonny has read some strategy, uh, which is too bad. I can't really simulate that for you. <laughs> That's, it's, it's always easier to pretend to be someone who's, uh, who knows less than you than someone who knows more. I really don't know if this is a sound move or not. Uh, but this is what he did. Sabotage. Since she feels like the next card isn't going to... You know, give her any choice at all. She, she has very. Uh, Pinky doesn't feel like she has a lot of choice other than to open up Ecuador. So she's. This is the second um, event she's done that's opened up another country. Uh, this one's a little bit different though. It, um, it's got a limit of two pieces, and she decided to use bases there. I feel like I've been going through this very slowly, kind of just giving you a very minute play-by-play -play, uh, compared to what I do sometimes. I know sometimes I do this as well, but it's because each turn seems to be very interesting to me, and so I like to talk about it. Uh, right now, another one of these special power cards has come up. Um, Betty Crocker is the one who gets to move. He is going to actually pass, however. Uh, he's not super excited about the ability it gives him. It's, it's a fine ability, but um, he sees another one's coming up next, and by passing now, it's the Auk is going to get to move, and then he will be able to um, uh, have the power on the next turn because he, you know, has two subsequent actions. So sometimes it's good to pass then because, you know, you're you're going to get to move the next time and and deprive someone else of the first choice. Junior just let off his terror. That's going to deprive Sonny of five points. What he did was. Um, he did Terra in Huila, Tolima, and I'm just going to apologize right now for all my pronunciations. Uh, 
this space, I'll just say this space, and this space uh, got rid of three bases, and the terror also uh, decreased the opposition to the government, because people are like, oh, there's terror here, why should I support you, Fark? Um, and so that was, that was a pretty good move for him. Now he just has to start laying some bases himself, and then he's, this could be a very quick game. Once again, Betty Crocker is going to pick the special power. This is a uh, reason why I'm telling you this is one, it's a special power, and two, it's kind of an interesting choice he's making, and so I'd like to talk about it. Uh, where I don't know where the little marker is. Um, so he's picking the event. The next player is going to be the FARC player, which normally he wouldn't want to be able to have uh, full ops and special activity, but the FARC player is down and the AUK player is up right now. So if he lays off the FARC a little bit and gives them a little bit of uh, something, which, you know, full ops and special activity is something, some time to regroup, he can maybe restore the balance between the AUK and the FARC and get something for himself. Tapias. Forgot to do this because I was busy um, jabbering about Sonny and Junior and all that. Um, but when uh, Sonny did the, the sabotage, he was supposed to be able to do some kidnapping, and so I'm going to let him do that now. Basically, he's going to be taking 3D6 worth of monies from uh, Betty Crocker. Three, and I don't think this loss of money would have, revenue would have changed Betty Crocker's actions, so I'm okay with it. Five, not a super good roll so far. That's better, 11. So that's that's a little bit of a silver lining and Sunny's enormous cloud. I don't believe Pinky has done an operation all game. She keeps getting cards that allow her to um, place pieces on the board. She actually just passed one up that let her place even more bases. She's, she saw this one, Sicarios, coming up that uh, allowed her to put her gorillas down. She doesn't have, she starts, she still has the same two that she began the game with. And so it would be nice to get some more. She's going to get to place them all for free. So we were at Madrid Donors, both the government and the FARC pass. This was the next card, Ospina and Mora, and that's what's up now, which is going to be government, then FARC. The government has um, another choice about special abilities. Um, Sonny, he turned down using a, 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 full, a full faction op and special activity in order to to pass, um, thinking that that probably Betty Crocker would go with the special power and then he'd get his uh, full faction op and special uh, ability. But it was useful that he did that because the propaganda card's next. It's nice to be able to act right before the propaganda card because then you can get things uh, in your to your advantage when it comes up. Um, no one, I don't think, is going to be able to go out and win right now, though. Uh, unless the government can, yeah, I don't think they, they don't have enough forces to, to rally up the, the points that they need. Um, so that's not possible. Uh, the Auk are one off. Uh, Pinky, she has her bases, but she doesn't have the money, despite the fact that she hasn't spent any money. Um, and seeing that he has Sunny pretty well beat back, uh, Betty Crocker went once again for the special ability. Uh, that's going to be especially useful since he's going to be down on money coming up. He's, he's saved up quite a bit. Uh, along with Pinky, he did, he hasn't done a lot of actions. I don't know if he's done any operations, really. I don't think he has. I think they've both done events, which is kind of unusual uh, to do so many events in this game. Um, so Sonny now has to, he gets to do whatever he wants, basically, which is very nice for him. And let's take a look at what his possibilities are. Okay, so he probably wants to rally right now because to get some bases down is going to get him some more money. It's something that's useful for him to do anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's probably what he's going to do. So he's going to rally these guys off to there. That'll cost him one. He's going to rally these guys off here. He's just going to get some money here. There, that's really nice. One, two, three. And then I think he wants to rally in the Midwest too. And actually he should rally as many places as possible because all of his guys are going to be flipped back down after this anyway. And that's going to do it for this round. I'll try to be less teachy next time. But I, since this is a somewhat new game, I figured um, a lot of people watching wouldn't know how to play necessarily. And so I thought it'd be a little, be more helpful to do that. Um, 
I certainly enjoy playing this game with others and in solitaire. I think it works great with both. Um, the cards really help make the negotiations work, the real people cards. I've tried it without them. Um, it's it's yeah it's it's a lot more difficult to have developed personalities without something to focus on, so I recommend that if you decide to play it multiplayer solitaire or you can always play it without them negotiating. I actually didn't do a lot of negotiating this time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So even though I have the cards, a lot depends on my mood. Um, I'm excited to see who's gonna win next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.